Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this live session on confidence and how to get back to it. So thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. I'm excited that you're here and I'm excited to share about this topic because it's something close to my heart. And I think those are the topics that are most easily and powerfully shared. So yes, thank you for coming. And if you have any questions, as always, pop them in the comments and I'll cover them either now or later. So if anything resonates or if there's anything that you want to know more about or anything that you question that you'd like more clarification around or um, doesn't quite add up, then definitely drop a comment and I will come back to it. So today's topic, confidence and how to get back to it, how to gain your confidence. Because this is based on the belief, my belief, that we are born confident. We're born happy with ourselves. We're born at peace. We're fascinated and curious by our bodies and what we can do and spend hours like just watching our hands as babies. Um, and it's really society and our conditioning that changes that. We are untainted by our, the expectations of society and our conditioning and judgment, other people's judgment. So this kind of natural born confidence is there, but over time, our experiences can mean that we lose confidence. And confidence is not always the same in every situation. So you might feel confident in a social situation, but feel completely unconfident going for that job or doing something out of your comfort zone. So it's not necessarily that we are all or nothing. There's a, a spectrum um, and confidence is completely unique to the individual. Some people are more naturally confident than others and that is often based on their experiences, their upbringing, how they've um, learned and been taught to experience themselves. So low self-confidence can stem from experience such as having an unsupportive or particularly critical environment or family. It can also stem from being separated from friends and family um, for the first time. It can stem from developing beliefs which are based on what we've heard or what we've been told. And then we over identify with them and create an identity around that belief. So for example, if, if my big sister didn't like me or accept me, and so that could develop into a belief that I'm unlikable and other people won't like me. So there's an example. So Self-confidence is an attitude towards your skills and abilities and who you are. So it can look like a trust in yourself and your abilities, knowing that you are able and can do what you set out to do. And if you fail, that it's okay. Being open and receptive to criticism, knowing that that doesn't necessarily mean anything about you as an individual, feeling in control of your life, feeling and understanding your strengths and weaknesses and feeling okay with those. And having a positive self view, positive and realistic communication, communicating assertively. So these are all indicative of positive self worth and confidence. Low self-confidence can look like self-doubt, being passive or submissive, being super shy in situations, difficulty trusting people, also feeling inferior or unloved and being sensitive to criticism as well as like a bunch of other things too. 
Oh, hey, Tanya. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't say that you're watching. Hey, thank you for joining. Um, and thank you for your comments there. Again, I'm scrolling down to see them. So sorry that I haven't acknowledged those yet. Um, so yes, confidence. The ways to, that we can harness confidence and get back to that confidence is really by taking action and doing the things that scare you, doing the things that feel intimidating. So these are ways that we can prove, we have to prove to ourselves that we can do the things and prove our beliefs wrong these beliefs that we create about ourselves. So it takes a lot of work and self-study. Um, and often it's helpful to go through the situations that you feel underconfident in, write down your fears around them, and then re-question them. Question the beliefs, question the ideas that, that are in your mind and ask, it, are they true? Is this something that I need to be fearful of? And to then maybe even uh, put the fears into an order and then start like from the least scary, start like setting yourself goals. Okay, so I feel nervous flirting with people. So, okay, what's what the fears around that? If one fear is like actually even just talking to a, a person that you're attracted to, that can be like, your first step on, on the journey is to have a conversation or say something, say hi, say bye, say you look nice today, say something to that, to a person as like an action step that you can take towards gaining your confidence in a situation. So for example, this is a really specific example for me, speaking in public or doing any kind of talking like this is really terrifying for me and it is not at all where my natural confidence lies like this is big um boundary stepping stuff like which is why i'm doing it partially to develop and prove that i can so this is like a really excellent example of how you've got to do the things and break through the boundaries and just show up for yourself and do the things that scare you and realize that nobody's perfect and it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it isn't perfect, then that's absolutely fine. And it's all just a part of that journey of growth and building your confidence. When you do something that scares you, when you step outside of your comfort zone, there's a feeling of pride and accomplishment. Like, yes, I did it. It was so scary, but I did it anyway. And that is how we build and realize how resilient we actually are, how capable we are, and how mm, nothing can stop you. <laughs> so the next thing, dust yourself off and try again. If it doesn't go right, dust yourself off, no big deal, try again, crack on. People that succeed in life and that are confident have an understanding of their strengths and weaknesses and understand that it's okay to make mistakes and it's a part of the building. So you can just dust yourself off, try again, try the next thing, no big deal. No one's judging except yourself at the end of the day. Noticing your self-talk is another one. So if you're constantly telling yourself, I'm shy, I'm timid, I'm awkward, then that's probably how you're going to come across. Saying is believing. So if you start talking to yourself in ways that are more confident, like I, this is new to me, but I can do it. I, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone, but I know I'll be okay. I am able. So these sorts of self-talks are replacing the traditional self-talk that, that you might be used to the more commonplace self-talk with other things. So this is all a part of the self-study paradigm as well. So if you find that you're constantly telling yourself these labels that you're nervous or shy or can't do it because you're a timid person, recognizing that that's a label and then questioning it and replacing it with something that's more open to growth. 
Getting to know yourself is another big one um, and studying yourself. So I always talk about self-study, but knowing what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, embracing what makes you unique as an individual, because everyone has different strengths. Everyone has different weaknesses and it's recognizing and understanding and being happy with who you are, the fundamental key to all of this and to basically everything in terms of like self-worth, self-esteem, confidence, healthy boundaries, self-care is self-acceptance. So accepting the whole. And once you do that, you recognize that you can do whatever you want to do, whatever you need to do. You have everything you need inside of you. And ironically, that comes from a place of accepting exactly where you are now, accepting where you are in your journey and the steps that you're taking towards your growth and towards like your fulfillment as a person. And that is empowering in itself. So Albert Einstein he is a total legend, isn't he? And he was not just a scientist, he was a philosopher. And he said, in my opinion anyway, he was a philosopher. He said um, that famous quote, if you're a fish and you're judging yourself by your ability to climb a tree, you'll spend your whole life thinking that you're stupid. And then that's true, isn't it? We have to recognize who we are and, our, and, and what speaks to us, what our strengths are, what we can share with the world, what our journey has taught us and focus on that rather than focusing on society's platform and like structure for what is acceptable and what is not and how we should be showing up and these judgments and expectations and social structures that are so limiting and tell us either overtly or insidiously what we can and can't do and this is often why people are underconfident is because they have grown up in a box that says you are this, and so this is what you can do. And that's not true. These are This is a limiting idea based on a social structure, which in my opinion is flawed. <laughs> and not true, because we all have different capabilities. We all have different minds. We all have different bodies. We all have different gifts. So recognizing your gifts and what you can share and getting to know and love and accept that on your unique journey in the world. Lastly, doing activities that you're good at will make you feel better in the, in the immediate term. So just doing those things that make you feel good and you know you are good at, because everyone's got something they're good at, do that. That's gonna make you feel like, yeah, I'm good at that. And then you can build on that and that those feelings, sit with those feelings, feel those feelings of, when you feel good, like I can do this, I'm good at this, allow that to resonate and sit in it and that harnessing these feelings, focusing on these feelings, meditating on these feelings will help manifest that feeling in your life. So focusing on the positive, focusing on the positive things that you are good at and you can do will build your confidence. And also doing exercise, you know, looking after yourself, eating healthily. These are all going to help you feel good about yourself as well and ultimately build your confidence in yourself. So <laughs> thank you for joining, lovely. You kind of threw me off a bit, actually, because I was like, I couldn't see that anyone has joined. It doesn't tell me. And there's actually three people here. So welcome, guys. I'm sorry I didn't notice that you were there it's a pleasure to have you here and if you didn't get all that then this is going to be live so you can just you, it's going to be in the group and you can ch check it out on instagram or here or youtube um and please know if you've got any questions write them down um put them in the comments and i will respond 
to any questions you have. And yeah, so it was fun. I'll let you get on now. Um, have an awesome evening. Mwah.